Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks. Thank you for listening to the show. Coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky, episode 191. This is a special episode because this episode is where I reveal Off the Cuff's 10 most fascinating people of 2017, according to yours truly, Adam Banks. So, I love doing this list, and I love compiling it. So, let's get started. It is that time of year again where I reveal off the cuffs 10 most fascinating people, according to Adam Banks, for the year of 2017, where I pretty much compile a list of 10 people who I feel like was fascinating for the year. And how you make this list is you have to be newsworthy. You have to be someone who the news focused on a lot this year. You have to be someone that people were just fascinated with this year. Now, if you make this list and I call you a fascinating person, this doesn't mean that you are a good person. This doesn't mean that you are a person that I respect, and it doesn't mean that you are a person that I even like. It's just fascinating. The word fascinating means extremely interesting. So if you made this list, that means you are extremely interesting. So let's start with the list. Coming in at number 10 is going to be the person who made the list last year at number one, Mr. Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States, hits the list this year at number 10. Trump, he has to be on this list. I cannot think of a man who is more newsworthy than this guy right here, and I put him at number 10 because... I didn't want to put him at number one because it's just not my style to do back-to-back number ones. So I'm going to put him on this list and put him at number 10. We all know that President Trump has Twitter fingers, and he likes to tweet. And he likes to send out very graphic tweets. And he likes to speak through his Twitter by calling out people, calling out prominent people like senators. Uh, President Trump called out Senator Kristen Gillibrand the other day, calling her a total flunky for Chuck Schumer and someone who would come to my office begging for campaign contributions not so long ago and would do anything for them, is now in the ring fighting against Trump. Very disloyal to Bill and crooked used. So he pretty much all but called Senator, the Senator a whore, and uh, it's got people pretty outraged. People say that uh, Trump is a president who all but called a senator a whore is unfit to clean toilets in Obama's presidential library or to shine George W. Bush's shoes. That is pretty strong words about the leader of the free world. I have never seen a president more hated than Donald Trump, or at least that's what's being betrayed by the media. We all know that the media despises Trump, and Trump despises the media. He's went on several occasions saying that the media is full of just fake news, and the media tries to turn people against him. That may be the case, and you really got to watch out for what to believe. I mean, the media has such a strong presence with people's thought process. The media can really persuade people's thinking. If you just turn on the TV and you just listen to everything that's on the news, it would look as though people hate Donald Trump. But you have to understand, the presidential office is an office where you have to get elected by the people. The people of the United States put President Trump in office. Now, the tweet sent to that senator calling her nothing else pretty much but a whore, uh, that's not even beginning to scratch the surface on the things that Trump has done this year. He called the leader of North Korea a rocket man, which spread like wildfire among everyone around the world. Kim Jong-un, he fires back by calling Trump old. And it took Trump no time to get back on Twitter and tweet, Why would Kim Jong-un insult me by calling me old when I would never call him short and fat? Oh well, I try so hard to be his friend, and maybe someday that will happen. We all know that President Trump cannot stand the ground Hillary Clinton walks on. So he tweets out, Crooked Hillary Clinton is the worst and biggest loser of all time. She just can't stop, which is so good for the Republican Party. Hillary, get on with your life and give it another try in three years. Back to Kim Jong-un, he tweets out this. He says, I told Rex Tillerson, our wonderful Secretary of State, 
that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with the little rocket man. Save your energy, Rex. We'll do what has to be done. He also tweets about the poor leadership ability by the mayor of San Juan. He says, the mayor of San Juan, who was very complimentary only a few days ago, has now been told by the Democrats that you must be nasty to Trump. Such poor leadership ability by the mayor of San Juan and others in Puerto Rico who are not able to get their workers to help. They want everything to be done for them when it should be a community effort. 10,000 federal workers now on island doing a fantastic job. The military and first responders, despite no electric, roads, phones, etc., have done an amazing job. Puerto Rico was totally destroyed. And of course, all of the controversy with the NFL and the, the kneeling for the flag, Trump took to Twitter to express his opinion on what he thinks about that. He says, NFL attendance and ratings are way down. Bring Boring games, yes, but many stay away because of the love of our country. League should back the U.S. If NL fans refuse to go to games until players stop disrespecting our flag and country, you will see change take place fast. Fire or suspend. It's tweets like this that keeps Trump on my list. It's tweets like this that keeps Trump fascinating among the American people and the rest of the world. So, yes, because of these tweets and because of all the controversy stirred up by President Trump, he remains on my list at number 10. Now, hitting my list at number nine is North Korea President Kim Jong-un, who basically says that he is building a rocket in North Korea. And this rocket could take out the better part of the United States of America if launched. Trump, of course, is not intimidated by it. And like I said before, he takes to Twitter to respond to it. I think that the North Korean president, Kim Jong-un, he makes my list because of his powerful presence in the world. Because of his construction or overseeing the construction of this rocket, he has to be on this list. He has made himself known all across the world and has put fear in the hearts of many Americans. Now, coming in at number eight is someone who is fascinating. And this person is someone that I like and someone that I do respect, but she has made this list because she was definitely fascinating in 2017. And I love putting women on this list because it's nice to have a good mix of male and female. But Dolly Parton hits the list at number eight. At the beginning of 2017, everyone probably remembers the wildfire that spread throughout Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, Dolly Parton's hometown. She's even got an amusement park there called Dollywood. After the devastation from the wildfire, Dolly Parton promised each family who had lost its primary residence in the fires $1,000 a month for the next five months. When Dolly Parton arrived on the week to help dole out the final payments, she brought the nearly 900 families an unexpected bonus, another $5,000 each for a total of $10,000. She also revealed another surprise, the creation of the Mountain Tough Organization to provide ongoing support to fire victims over the next three years and the pledge to fund it with at least $3 million. Mountain Toll started on June 1st. Its goal is to help individuals and families impacted by the fire by providing resources for low-income individuals and families in Gatlinburg and the surrounding areas with an eye on the long-term needs of the of those impacted. The organization was staffed with case managers who identified the immediate needs of residents and the most effective ways to use the funds to help. That included things like transportation to a job or medicine for health conditions caused by the fire. Parton said that the donation, it made her feel humble. She said it made her feel proud that she was able to do something. She said that she doesn't put put herself on any kind of pedestal for doing this because it is the right thing to do. She said, quote, I'm a Smoky Mountain girl and I've been blessed in my life to become a celebrity. And when you're in a position to help, you should help, end quote. That right there warms your heart, and we need more people like Dolly Parton in the world who does things like this. Coming in at number seven on my list, and might as well tell you who number six is. 
Number seven is Tom Jurich, and number six is Rick Bettino, the duo of the University of Louisville's athletic program. Tom Jurich was the athletic director. Rick Bettino was the head men's basketball coach. They were both involved in several scandals over the last couple years. 2016, we saw the unraveling of the Katina Powell scandal with the hookers at the University of Louisville. But in 2017, we saw the unraveling of maybe one of the biggest college basketball scandals of all time. Rick Bettino and Tom Jurich pretty much destroyed the University of Louisville single-handedly. The story is Rick Bettino was using Adidas money to pay high schoolers to come to Louisville, an Adidas brand-supported school, so they would come there and rep Adidas brand clothing. And due to the high amount that Adidas was paying players, players were signing up to come to Louisville. That, of course, is a recruiting violation, maybe one of the biggest that's ever happened, and Rick Bettino and Tom Jerks was both fired. Bettino lied saying that he knew nothing about this scandal, but it has come out that that was totally false. Patino actually was one of the main ones making phone calls for this to happen. And Tom Jerch supported him the entire way, said that if Rick Patino goes, he goes. And the, the interim president of the University of Louisville, who knows if he was just trying to make a name for himself, maybe, maybe not, he wasn't putting up with it. He heard what Tom Jerch had to say. And he said, okay, Rick Bettino's going, and you're going with him. And he fired both of them. They were on top of the mountain. Tom Jurich, one of the best athletic directors in college basketball, lost his job, still unemployed. I'm sure he will bounce back. But as for Rick Bettino, one of the great coaches to ever coach in the game of basketball, lost his job, lost coaching at top 10 rated Louisville. And I say top 10 by... Louisville being one of the top 10 basketball programs in college basketball, is uh, Patino's now unemployed as well. Uh, who knows what his show cause will be of this scandal. That is still an ongoing process. But it looks like that the days of Rick Patino coaching in the NCAA, uh, those days are over. Rick Patino could bounce back and start coaching again in the National Basketball Association. But due to his poor winning record with the Boston Celtics, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Who knows if that will even happen? But it's crazy to me, and it's fascinating to me, that two prominent people in the world of college basketball were sitting high on top of the mountain and then just slowly fell all at once due to this scandal. Coming in at number five on my list of most fascinating people is going to be Eric C. Kahn. Eric C. Kahn was arrested due to a scandal involving him, a judge, and a doctor who would work together to scheme the American taxpayers. They would basically give people Social Security benefits when they didn't need them. And they all worked together to... Let's say someone come in with a hurt toe. We know a hurt toe is a hurt toe. It's not really a serious issue. They will come in to see Eric C. Kahn. He would send them to a doctor, which was also involved in the scheme. And then that uh, the doctor would say, okay, this person with the hurt toe uh, should get full benefits uh, because they can't work anymore. And then they would go to a judge to get it wrote off and, and sign, seal, deliver. The judge who also was in on the scheme would sign, seal, deliver the Social Security payment for that uh, patient, and uh, they would get full Social Security benefits when they really didn't deserve it. He, Eric C. Kahn schemed the American taxpayers uh, over $500 million, almost a billion dollars. He schemed them. And Eric C. Kahn was arrested, and he escaped from jail. He was on house arrest, but he took off his ankle bracelet and fled the country, and just recently was captured in Honduras by the FBI. He was arrested without incident at a pizza hut in Honduras. Of course, Eric C. Kahn, he pled not guilty to four counts of escape and conspiring to escape. 
So this guy just continues to be fascinating. He was able to escape from jail, run from the FBI, and he, and he left the freaking country. And uh, he he did something that you'd see in a movie, that you'd see on Prison Break. But, you know, he got caught. Eric C. Khan might not stay arrested forever. This guy is definitely a flat risk. Who knows? He could do it again. He could escape again, and he could get away with it. But if they if if he stays detained... He is going to have a miserable life in jail. I tell you that. He is someone who is not going to be able to take jail. He could even be someone who commits suicide in jail. I don't know if he will be able to take the act of being in jail for so long. Because he's looking at a good 25, 30 years in prison. And that's pretty much the rest of his life. Coming in at number four on my list is the cast of This Is Us. It is a new television drama that hit... American airwaves in 2016, but it has really taken off in 2017 as being the number one hit TV show in America, and the cast of This Is Us is just unbelievable. It consists of Mandy Moore, Milo Ventimiglia, Chrissy Metz, Sterling K. Brown, Justin Hartley, and it tells the story of this family, the Pearsons. All the way from the mom and dad's early teenage days all the way up to um, old age. And this show is really special. It tells the story of, and it shows how life can change and how life can evolve. And this show, it makes you think. Because it shows what their family was like in the 1980s. And then it shows what their family is like present day. And it's completely different. And there are some things that stay the same, but their stories are unbelievable. And the writers are great. And I think the real magicians behind the cinema is the editors because they edit the show so beautifully. And this cast, even though it's not an individual, this cast as a group, those characters that I mentioned, they're all fascinating. And I'm just going to group them together and say the cast of This Is Us comes in at number four on my list. Coming in at number three on my list is Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest is a media mogul. He is quite possibly the most famous media mogul of all time. He is everywhere. He's branched himself out to NBC, to E, to ABC, to CBS. He's everywhere. He, this year, added to his resume by by becoming the official co-host for Kelly Ripa's talk show, Live. So the show is now titled Live with Kelly and Ryan. Ryan Seacrest has been fascinating for a long time. He really exploded in 2008 when he, when he became executive producer at E! and started producing shows. And he created hits like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and other reality shows. And he's the host of American Idol, which will start back up soon. He has hosted American Juniors. He's hosted many programs for NBC like Knock Knock. Uh, Ryan Seacrest has his own radio show live or on air with Ryan Seacrest. He does the New Year's countdown that Dick Clark used to do. He basically took over the role of Dick Clark on New Year's. Ryan Seacrest is everywhere, and Ryan Seacrest is, he, in 2017, he continues to thrive. He got hit with a sexual assault, not a sexual assault, I'm sorry, a sexual harassment allegation by a woman, and it has died down because I don't think Ryan Seacrest, I don't think he did it. I honestly just think it was somebody seeking money because she said that she would keep the story quiet if he paid her ten million dollars. So there you go. But Ron Seacrest is 2017's number three most fascinating person. Coming in at number two on my list is the one and only Colin Kaepernick. This guy has influenced so many people to protest and. I have to say, it is a peaceful protest. It's not a protest where you're out uh, slamming cars into buildings or slamming bats into windows. It's a peaceful protest. But uh, the first time Kaepernick was noticed sitting down during the playing of the Star Spangled Banner as opposed to the tradition of standing. Uh, Of course, you know, he's the quarterback of the 49ers, and this was a preseason game. He sat during the anthem, and this was in 2016. But 
the controversy that he's caused in 2017 is why he is 2017's most fascinating person number two on my list. He has caused a lot of NFL players to protest by sitting down or kneeling during the national anthem because they agree with what Kaepernick said. And I'm quoting Kaepernick. He said, I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. To me, this is bigger than football, and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with murder. And then he went on to reference a series of events that led to the Black Lives Matter movement and adding that he would continue to protest until he feels like that the American flag represents what it is supposed to represent. He got the president talking in September of 2017. President Donald Trump sent out multiple tweets, there's that Twitter again, in which he advocated that NFL players should be either fired or suspended if they fail to stand up for the national anthem. In response, many NFL teams and players stood together to protest against Trump's opinion. The players knelt, locked arms, or even remained in the locker room during the playing of the anthem. So he had this whole controversy spilling over into this year. And it's crazy to think that one man can do this. It's crazy to think that one man can cause this much controversy. Mike Pence attended an Indiana Colts game and left the game because players started kneeling at the flag. So he caused a big ruckus in 2017, and he influenced a lot of people and influenced a protest movement. To me, that is fascinating, and he is fascinating for what he has caused and the damage that this may have caused to the NFL. A lot of people out there, folks, are disappointed in a lot of these players and they won't stand for people who won't stand for the flag and they will give up their season tickets or quit watching football altogether. I know people who I never thought would quit watching football has quit watching it because they said that a lot of the things going on 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 off the field is nonsense. So it has affected the NFL and a guy who can who possibly had a hand in bringing down the NFL is fascinating. The NFL is not going to crumble, but the NFL could definitely lose its spot as being the number one watched league in America. The NBA is on its heels. But Colin Kaepernick, number two on my list. And ladies and gentlemen, the number one most fascinating person in 2017, according to Adam Banks here on Off the Cuff, is none other than LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball made himself into a media personality in 2017. This guy is very loud, boisterous, and uh, likes to expose his sons. He has three sons named LeVar Ball, who plays for the Los Angeles Lakers, LiAngelo Ball, who just recently got kicked off, or he didn't get kicked off, he his father took him off the UCLA basketball team because he said that the coach wasn't treating his son right. And then he's got a younger son, LaMelo Ball, who was the star of his high school basketball team in Chino Hills. And his dad decided to rip him out of high school because he felt like that the coach wasn't coaching the team right. So he sent both of his sons that he took out of college, took out of high school, and sent him overseas to Louisiana, I guess that's how you say it, overseas to play, and his sons are making around $500 a month playing over there. He destroyed their college uh, dreams, and he destroyed their college future, and he thinks he knows what's best for his kids. He's got his own reality show called Ball in the Family that he signed the deal with, uh, producers that produced hits like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and The Hills and The Real World. Surprisingly, the show is not on national television. It's on the internet, and it's set up just like a reality show. I surprisingly find it very entertaining, but LeVar Ball is what makes it entertaining. And this guy, I have to hand it to him. He is a marketing genius. He came out of nowhere, and he had a vision uh, for his sons, and he made it happen. He's created this brand, Big Baller Brand, and he wraps it around his sons and himself. And he's got a wife named Tina, but she's in the background. And it's crazy. She had a stroke, and it kind of put her down. 
She walks with a cane sometimes on the reality show. But LeVar created this brand, and, I mean, he made his high school son a star. He's got over 2 million followers on Instagram. A high school kid, 16, 17-year-old, has over 2 million followers. That's insane. So the Ball family, all together, is fascinating, but the one who created it, the mastermind behind it all, is the dad, LeVar. And LeVar, his sons don't say much. LeVar is definitely the mouthpiece. And he says he has a vision that all three of his sons will play for the Lakers. So far, he's got one on there. I don't know how he's going to get his other sons on there. I don't really think it's going to happen because I think that administration is kind of getting sick of LeVar. The Lakers, the the team had to change where they have their meetings because of LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball likes to put his nose in the Lakers' administrative business, the coaching business. He wants to be a part of the organization, pretty much run it. He wants it done his way. He's, uh, But he's a genius. I mean, what, he keeps being him, and he keeps getting exposure. He's got his whole brand. He went on Colin Coherd and had words with his co-host and created the catchphrase, uh, stay in your lane. He didn't create it, but he made it famous. Now when you he- hear people say stay in your lane, they think LeVar Ball. But that guy popped up out of nowhere. Definitely fascinating. His people who say things are going to happen and then it does, that fascinates me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed episode 191 here on Off the Cuff because this is where I have revealed... Off the Cuff's 10 Most Fascinating People, according to Adam Banks, here in 2017. It's always fun to do this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Adam Banks. This has been Off the Cuff. We will see you in the next episode.